From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh my, there is so much to share with you today and I'm happy that we could come into your home and, and uh, review some of the things that are very, very important. This first one, well, you know what just happened. It was the election with the president's policy. A little bit there. In fact, this is the first headline. A message sent to a grudging president. All right, Jack's going to be discussing that. And then ISIS declared war on the United States homeland in 2012, promising an attack worse than 9-11. Can you believe that one? And then number three, jihadists from 80 countries fighting for Islamic State. You know, many people are leaving their homeland and they're going over and they're learning how to, to fight for ISIS. We will refer to that too, but I just want to say that there are so many good things coming up we want to talk about in just a moment. Of course, we, we do want to remember what just happened this past week or so, the, the Veterans Day. I couldn't help but remember my brother Don in the Air Force who went home to be with the Lord just a few months ago because of cancer. But how good it is to know I know where he is. He's with the Lord. No more suffering. And then coming up very soon will be Thanksgiving. Now, next week we're going to do our Thanksgiving program. And Jack, it's going to be a little bit different. I saw something we did a number of years ago, I said, wow, this is wonderful. It's our life story from the time I met Rexella right up to the present hour. I said, you know, I'm always talking about things that are going to come, and I just want to have one happy program from beginning to end. And you know, I was a minister for the Youth for Christ organization. I was preaching one night in this Youth for Christ meeting, and a young lady by the name of Rexella May Shelton was singing. And I was on the platform praying for a wife. I had always been praying for a wife. And I heard footsteps and I looked. <laughs> I said, Lord, this is it. And then she got up and she said, you know, God has called me to be a soloist with some evangelist. And I said, hallelujah. Whoa, yes. <laughs> and I'm being honest right now. That's what happened. <laughs> and I tried to get a date afterward. And she said, oh, I'm going with another guy. And I said, well, I'm going to another girl, but we can get rid of them, can't we? <laughs> you know? And I went home and prayed all night. A six-foot-eight guy living with me from college said, why do you care about one? The world's full of women. I said, oh, if you could see Rexella. <laughs> well, one night I looked into her eyes, just six months later, and I said, Rexella, wilt thou? And it was a hot night, and she wilted. And we're going to tell you the whole story next week, all through the Thanksgiving portion of this uh, time that's so exciting. It is so exciting, believe me, to be living now. And don't we have a lot to be thankful for at Thanksgiving? And then as we look forward to Christmas, we remember the first coming of our Lord. Thank you, God, for sending your Son, our Savior. And uh, something that could happen even now, it's certainly shown in this beautiful, beautiful picture. I'd like you to take a look. In love with the return of Jesus. Now, this is talking about the rapture that could happen at any moment. And uh, this is quite an article I'd like for you to read by Norbert Leith. And there you see him on the screen. And he's predicting and uh, pointing out the fact that Jesus could come at any moment. This is what he said. Paul rejoiced at the end of his life over the fact that in light of the return of Jesus, he had made great efforts, and now the reward was in sight. This reward he saw for all those who had the same attitude as he did. Now, Paul was the first one, I believe, I'm going to ask Jack, in the Bible to refer to the rapture, the event that could happen at any moment, at any time. Right, Jack? Right. We'll get to that in a moment. But I want to start this with Romans 13, 12, that knowing the time, 
that it is now time to awaken out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. What does he mean? Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. He is there talking about the salvation of the body, Romans 8, 23, when we hear the words, Come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and we sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and because every sign is here, our salvation is nearer than we first believed. Now, what is the rapture? 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 18, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall arise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I had a Scotch pastor, Dr. John Hunter, who said, The dead rise first because they have six feet further to come. <laughs> All right, now, Here's where Paul <laughs> is the first one to mention the rapture. You can't find the rapture in the four Gospels. Don't look for it. Christ was talking about his kingdom seven years after the rapture. Paul was given the message of the rapture. It only started with him, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54, and then he explains it. I show unto you a mystery. A mystery is something that's taught for the first time in the Bible, and it's the rapture. I show you, Mr. We shall not all sleep, be dead, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we the living shall be changed. For this corruptible must put an incorruption. This mortal, the living, shall put an immortality. So when this corruptible, the dead, shall have put an incorruption, and this mortal, the living, shall have put an immortality, then shall be brought the past the saying, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? We're going up in the twinkling of an eye, and that's 187 trillion billions of miles, all in 11 one-hundredths of a second. I got it all figured out. Hallelujah. Now, there are two classes going. Remember what I started with? Be ready. The night is far spent. We got the class that's grumbling. These Christians are living a double standard. They don't care where they go, what they do, how they live, how they talk. And that's 2 Peter 3, 3. Knowing this first that there shall come in the last day, scoffers say, yeah, where's the comments of his coming? We're never going to see this stuff. It won't happen for a hundred years. God forgive you, you backslider. And God's talking about you in Revelation 3, verses 15 to 17. I know your works that you're neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That's the Greek word, emio. God says, you make me want to vomit. Mm. God says, it, yeah. But we have the other crowd that's saying, oh, amen, come Lord Jesus, just like our brother Leith said, looking for that hour. And you're going to miss the tribulation. I don't think the other crowd that says, ah, I've never had my life, is even going to see it. I think they're lost as can be. But in Revelation 3.10, he says to the church of Laodicea, I will keep you from the hour of testing, of tribulation that comes upon the whole earth. You might escape it. Escape it? Right. Amen. Amen. That's why Titus 2.13 says, to those who want him to come, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know the greatest thing about it all is? Revelation 22, 4. They shall see his face, the face of Jesus. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and deliver us from all the judgments that are soon to fall on this earth. We'll be gone. Amen. Amen, Jack. You know, that one thing about, about the rapture and the coming of the Lord, we need to be ready. I'll tell you, not only accepting Jesus as our Savior, but also our lives living for the oh, Lord. Oh, sure. We as soon as we ready. get there, people say, oh, I can hardly wait. Wait a minute. You're going to have to give account of your life on earth. 2 Corinthians 5.10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one of us may receive the things done in his body according to that which he hath done, whether it be good or bad bad. Right. Get ready. That's for sure. Now, right up front, I referred to the nationwide election that we just had. And truly, I believe this was a revelation of the fundamental and true feelings 
of the American people. Don't you take a look here. Democrats sift the wreckage for lessons. Well, I trust that there will be some lessons learned. Big GOP win a rebuke of the president. Obama's midterm malaise. Now, Jack, would you like to read that one, please? Understanding full well Obama's unpopularity is a drag on some Democrats in tight congressional races. White House officials are signaling to party leaders and campaign managers alike there will be no consequences should they run away from the president in order to win. They said, we don't want you to back us. That's dangerous. Whoa, now take a look at this next one. Here you see what they were talking about there. The, there's the runaway from the, the president, the party leaders, and oh my, oh my. Here you see another picture of our president, a message sent to a grudging president after um, a thump on Obama doubles down on hostility, antagonism, and distance. The enigma of Barack Obama. The nagging question remains, how can someone so intelligently be advanced but be so politically stunted? All right. What the U.S. needs is a great president. Now, you know, Jack, we, we do need to respect all those who are in authority. But on our program a while back, you warned the president. You said, if you don't turn around, the American people are going to let you know that they are not going along with the things that you're trying to push. Thank you for that warning, Jack. Yeah, he was down to 40 percent. And many people said it's because he's so cocky, egotistical, and always just up there, I can do it all. In fact, just before the election, he said, I'm sick of all my advisors. I can give better information than they can, and I can write better speeches than all my speechwriters. Well, maybe you should have written them and said them because you, they failed you. Now, how does God feel about this? And I warned Mr. President not long ago, and it's happened. First of all, James 1.8 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The Bible says in Proverbs 16.18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he, the Lord, shall lift you up. He didn't do that for you. Now why? Proverbs 6.16-18, 6, these six things does God hate. Seven are an abomination unto them, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sows discord among the brethren. Mr. President, what's the remedy? Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I, God, hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will hear their land. I pray you'll take this advice. Mm, Jack, how very, very true. And you know, friends, a moment ago, we did uh, speak about the fact that we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord at any moment. And we need to pray for all those in authority that we can see a spiritual awakening here in the United States and around the world. And I did mention a moment ago, too, that Christmas is coming up. I can't believe it. But some people are going into the stores and Christmas trees are there. The gifts are there, ready to buy. But I have something that I want to show you right now that would be a wonderful Christmas gift. And it is our offer of the week. And take a look. The Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Oh, it's so wonderful. And please take a look at the promo. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Van Impey Ministries. Dr. Van Impey has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Van Impey used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, 
your future, an A to Z index to prophecy, revelation revealed verse by verse, and Daniel final end time mysteries unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. And it is a great gift for any occasion, especially for Christmas. And, uh, you know, if somebody has a birthday, you want to give them this wonderful gift. It's one of a kind. Oh, it's a prophecy Bible. All the verses Jack points out about prophecy in here. And with your order, I am going to be sending something that he has done. Jack, will you explain what it is, please? This is a gift that comes with it. You know, I put all the letters uh, under these subjects, A-F-I-I-D-M-R-S-I, for the rapture and tri tribulation and everything. But you had to read the Bible to find it. Now I've created this booklet, and it's wonderful because you can look and it tells you where every one of these 10,385 verses is coded. You can turn right to it now instantaneously, and it's a gift. And God told me to get it ready for you. Jack, I want to thank you for this. It's a wonderful, convenient guide to prophecy in the Bible, all enumerated in this little uh, guide. It's prophetic passages from the Bible. And we'll be including this with your order. There's the 800 number and there's the address. So please make the call right away. How great it is, as I said, to be ready for the up and coming holidays. You can be ready if you make that call right away. And now, friends, we're going to go on here with President Obama, and uh, you know, he may have realized that boots on the ground, he needed a few more over there in Iraq if we're going to really have our victory over the Islamic State, because he's done it. Take a look at this, please. U.S. to deploy 1,500 more troops to Iraq for a militant fight. Oh, my, oh, my. I think he must have learned that we needed more boots on the ground, don't you, Jack? Oh, all us senators, all the military men, generals, admirals are saying we've got to have it or we will not win. And if we don't win, they're going to be here killing us in American Canada. Well, you know, one reason I think that he realizes the importance of it, and I'd like for you to take a look at the next headline, because they've made a threat to us like no other. ISIS declared war on U.S. homeland in 2012, promising an attack worse than 9-11. Worse than 9-11. And take a look at this next one. Spanish intelligence intercepts plot to weaponize Ebola? Jack, would you please explain this one? I've had a burden on my heart because we've had Ebola threats before, 2012. And not much was done. Now they're making such a fuss of all of it. Why? I said, you know, my heart's heavy and I feel these guys want to be killed because they get 72 virgins. I think they might even try to get the disease, hundreds of them, and then get into America to spread the disease. It sounds far-fetched. Wait a minute. You know, 6,000 have arrived by Studa visas, and they've disappeared, and they found six of them already making bombs. Now. Rexella just said, and this came out of Spain, and these intelligence people of that country said they are weaponizing this Ebola and all the other diseases we're going to mention in a minute to send to America and Canada. Mass devastation would take place, but because you remember the fourth horse of the apocalypse in Revelation is the one that destroys one-fourth of the population of the earth through the sword, Islam, and the beasts of the field. Weaponization, God help America. Oh, Jack, yes, God help America. We truly need to be praying, and I want you to see this next headline. It sends chills up my spine. ISIS has captured an advanced Chinese-made surface-to-air missile. We're stealing missiles already. And yes, Islamic State group may have chemical weapons. Going on, ISIS assessed to have sarin nerve gas capability. Oh, and then imminent ISIS threat to U.S. power grid. Oh, Jack, there's so many things that they're aiming at right now. And oh, they're ready to do it, I believe. Well, this power grid is really dangerous. Now, have you heard of the electromagnetic pulse? Russia has it. China has it. 
And worst of all, Iran has it. And when they get the bomb, they may use this before the bomb, watch out. What does it do? When they are 200 miles out at sea, for that's as close as they can come by law, they can shoot an atomic weapon into space, 200 miles high, and blow it up over the mid part of our nation, and as it comes down and mixes with the magnetic field, it can destroy all electric current from all the United States of America and Canada and Mexico. And you realize what would happen? You can no longer transport trucks because it has stopped the engines. And you can't heat your houses. You can't cool them. What devastation. No wonder they said in the beginning, as you quoted, we're going to do something worse than 9-11. This could be it. Remember the words, the electromagnetic pulse, the most dangerous thing that could ever happen in the history of the world. Mm. I have some more headlines here, Jack. And at the end of these headlines, I'm going to ask you a very important question. That's a biblical question here, but going on, I'd like for you to take a look. That's something that breaks my heart. Experts warn more European Muslim youth are radicalizing. They're leaving their homeland and going over and learning how to be a part of ISIS, jihadists from 80 countries fighting with Islamic State. And then Britons who try to leave ISIS are threatened with death. Islamic State killed 322 from single Sunni tribe. Unbelievable. I can't believe that they would do such a thing. But I do understand now better why they said that they're going to do something to our homeland. ISIS said this. Worse than 9-11, Jack. That's their plan for us. That's why we read in Ezekiel 3:17, Son of man, I've made you a watchman. Therefore, hear the word from my mouth and give them warning from me. And I saw this recently. Ezekiel 33, 3. When the sword comes down upon the land, blow the trumpet and warn my people. And then Isaiah 58, 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet and warn my people. And God has called me to do that. Yes. I've got to warn America, warn Canada. Trouble is just ahead of us. Now, Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, nations will be in distress with perplexly mass confusion. Paul said in 2 Timothy 3, 1, this and also the last day perilous, dangerous time shall come. The prophet Jeremiah said in chapter 30, verse 7, the last for that day, judgment day, through the tribulation hour, Revelation 7, 14, is great. None is like it. Daniel said in 12, 1, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. But listen to Jesus in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. Then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be again. Verse 22, except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, the saved, those days shall be shortened. And we're going to be called out of this mess soon, as I said in the beginning of the program, when he says, come up hither, Revelation 4.1, and we sweep through the heavenlies and the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15.52. And I said earlier, and we'll see his face, Revelation 20.4. But you can see how the judgment can become greater as they weaponize diseases within the things they're going to use. Oh, you know, Jack, I've heard you say before something very important in light of what we've talked about today. Terrorism is one of the last signs of the coming of the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be my return. It's here. Why? Because of Noah's day, a world filled with terrorism. Genesis 6, 11. Now, Jesus again said in Luke 21, 9, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrorism, be not Frightened. These things must be. Before what? When you see them coming, then shall they see Jesus, the Son of Man, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, 
verse 28, look up, your redemption draws nigh. That's the redemption of the body, the rapture, as I said earlier in the program, Romans 8, 23. And then in verses 31 and 32, he says, when this terrorism is happening full blast like it is through ISA now, then what? <laughs> oh, this is great. Then this is the generation that will live and be there for when I come. Mm. We're the generation. Amen, Jack, and that's why we need to be ready. I truly believe everything that we've been saying today because Jack has given us the Bible, and the Lord doesn't want us to be asleep. He wants us to be aware of his coming again, and as I've said so often, we need to be ready. Have you opened your heart to the Lord as your Savior, been forgiven of all your sins? Jack's going to pray a prayer right now of salvation. Will you pray it with him, Jack? Oh, isn't he a precious Jesus, a precious Savior? What he went through on that cross is unspeakable. Suffering, agonizing, an ignominious death for you. And he would have done it just for you, whoever you are listening. Now pray this, Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for taking my pain upon your body. Thank you for taking my eternal hell that hour on you so that I might be in heaven. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Please write to me if you did. I want to send you this wonderful little book of First Steps in a New Direction. There's my address. And oh, I trust that you did. Open your heart to the Lord and know him as your Savior and guide in the future. Now, I just want to say a wonderful new offer, the prophetic Bible of Jack Van Ippie, the Jack Van Ippie Prophecy Bible. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Allen, my friend, to order the Jack Van Epi Prophecy Bible. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Epi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Epi Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Call today for this treasure of a lifetime. Rexella? Oh, friends, don't put it off. There's the 800 number. There's the address, and I will be enclosing this wonderful little handbook, Prophetic Verses of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, all with your orders. So make the call right away. Oh my, how we need to be doing right in this day and age, don't we? Because the coming of the Lord is so near. The best reason for doing right today is tomorrow. We'll look forward to being here home again next week. And until then, do remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.